Well, here I am at the Jordan River. This is basically the border between Jordan and Israel. You can see actually the Israeli side right there. On the other side, it's pretty elaborately done up. There are a couple different churches up there. You have Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, uh, etc. Similarly, you have the Jordanian side here where our group has just uh, toured, I guess, and you have a couple churches. There's an Eastern Orthodox up there as well. And actually further along on this side is the uh, remembrance site of the baptism of Jesus. You'll, you'll notice that the Jordan River is actually rather insignificant. I mean, it looks like a little crick or whatever, as we would call it in uh, Minnesota. It's not really the raging river you would think of, but that's because all the way up at the Sea of Galilee, uh, which is about 60 miles away from here, uh, due north, you have a lot less, or I should say a lot more water diversion, so hardly any water gets down here. But at the time of Jesus, and even during the time when Joshua and the children of Israel would have crossed this part of the river here, which this would actually have been really close to where uh, Israel crossed because Jericho on the Israel side is just directly uh, west from that, uh, from this location. And the river would have, during flood season, would have been about a mile across. But this, you know, as you can tell, is only about 20 feet, 20, 30 feet across. And so that's pretty insignificant. So that's what we're looking at right now but it's really cool to be here and uh, just observe some of these things in about a week i'm going to be on the israeli side uh, looking at the jordan river so looking forward to that all right hope you guys are keeping uh, keeping the faith and doing everything well all right we'll talk to you later all right well hello there we are at the biblical site of penuel and Right there is the Jabbok River Valley. I just wanted to point this out because this is actually pretty neat where this is located. I'll give you just a quick panoramic. This is the Jabbok River Valley headed up that way. But before I do too much, actually, oh, sorry for making you so sick. All right, I wanted to show you the map a little bit here. Um, so this is the biblical land of Gilead. And you'll notice right there in the middle of the video, you have the Jabbok R River Valley. It's a little windy, so... My map's uh, moving around a little bit, but you'll notice that Penuel is right there, and Machanaim, which is Hebrew for encampment there. Penuel is the face of God. And so you'll notice that this Jabbok River Valley empties out into the Jordan River Valley at Sukkot, and then you go down to Adam, and you can cross over into Israel and Shechem, etc., and then you end up getting to Jerusalem if you head that way. But So this is a very important site in Jordan, and one of the interesting uh, happenings uh, during this time is the story of Genesis 22, and basically Jacob uh, interacting with God. And, and in Jacob, uh, Genesis 32, there's no, there's no book of Jacob. In Genesis 32, it says that Jacob went his way and he's traveling from Haran, which is to the north. And this is one of the common ways that you would travel from the north is you would come down the uh, Jabbok River Valley here. And you, and that's what exactly what Jacob did. And he sees God. And so he names this place Machanaim, which is probably right here, but it could be another location nearby. But then later on, it says in verse 22, that same night, he took his two wives, his two female servants and 11 children and crossed the ford at Jabbok. So that's this river right here. You'll notice that the river starts down that valley, comes down here and it doesn't continue, but it actually wraps around this massive Tell, which is the word hill that we're on. So it wraps around, there's the rest of my group having fun, uh, and it wraps around this uh, part and goes out that valley. And so if Jacob is here, which makes sense in the story, then he sends his family that way, away from danger, because the way into this area, which we're told in uh, chapter 32, that Edom is, or Edom, J, uh, Esau, which is also named Edom, I guess that's fine, um, 
he's coming to meet Jacob with 400 men. And so he gets scared. And so he sends his family away that way, um, up the river. And you can kind of see actually uh, that paved road. I don't know if you can see it so well, but it's in the center of my screen. That paved road actually follows the ancient road route that uh, came through here. Uh, away and so that's probably the route that his family would take while Jacob waited here for his family members uh, Esau to either see see what would happen but it's right here that in at the end of chapter 32 Jacob wrestles with God and God says your your name shall no longer be Jacob but your name shall be Israel which means uh, he has striven with God or God strives with you God fights uh, for you and so I think that's what Israel is talking about is the fact that uh, God is the one who's going to fight for you now you're not going to be the one who uh, deceives and cheats your way into blessing like you have been in the past no this is going to be something that God does for you and that's found right here at the location of Penuel which is in Jordan at the moment but originally this was a very uh, intense uh, part of Israel and uh, this was uh, crossed over both by Abraham as well as Jacob. And then it plays into uh, Ishbosheth later on in the kingdom. And uh, he tries to make a capital around here at Machanaim as well. So that's uh, important. Also, one thing that I could point out is right there on that hill, uh, that's likely at least a location of a fortified tower during the story of Gideon when Gideon comes and chases the kings up this way he says in Judges 8 that he's going to come back and destroy this city and he pulls down a tower and it's likely that that would have been the location there's fortified remnants of a tower right there and so it's really kind of neat to see that that's a possibility as well just a reminder that the bible's actually talking about real historical events because theology is based on history not just some preconceived or erroneous notions that things are happening uh, and it's all make-believe no these are real events in real time uh, in real history so it's kind of fun to see it uh, on the ground All right, well, I am here at another site and you can see it's a pretty beautiful site. I'll try to, hopefully the sun's not blinding you, but uh, hopefully you can see the Dead Sea behind me. It's pretty beautiful. In fact, I wanna make sure you're seeing this. So you see the sun shining off the Dead Sea. And again, I've never seen it from this side. I've always been on the other side of the Dead Sea. So this is kind of neat. And then here's the Jordan River Valley. We are up in part of the mountains of Jordan right now just uh, east of the river so this is uh, just a beautiful panoramic view of the Jordan River Valley and you notice the shadowy place over there it brought to mind the biblical scripture of uh, Simba everything the light touches is our kingdom what about the shadowy place over there you must never go there uh, yeah, that may not be biblical, but uh, it was definitely sprung to my mind. So anyway, uh, back to the real deal. So you'll notice the whole group is up here because this is the site that's most likely identified with Baal Peor, which is most commonly known from Numbers 25, uh, where you have Israel uh, committing idolatry with some of the uh, prostitutes and women of uh, that are practicing Baal worship, and that is located in this place, which was likely some sort of religious shrine. Notice it's very high up, and so this is going to be, typically in religious uh, systems, you have the high places being the places of worship, and so this is a very significant place for that. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this place is you'll notice over yonder, I don't know if you can make out the building up there, Maybe um, it should just look like an outline in the sky probably to you, but that's actually Mount Nebo or what we would call Pisgah it's located as. And that's really well known from Numbers 22 to 24 where you have uh, ba King Balak uh, hire the prophet Balaam. And first in Balaam goes to one of the ridges, which is, we don't know which one it is, somewhere on that side of things. And then the second ridge he goes to, 
uh, is Pisgah, which is identified with Nebo. And so there he's overlooking, from that ridge, he's overlooking the people of Israel, which are in, encamped at Shatim, which I don't know if you can see the lake dead ahead. There's a lake because the Jabbok River is dammed up over there. Um, and Shatim is located down there. There's a tell uh, to the left of that lake. You probably can't tell it out, but it's, it's a long, elongated tell down there. I can see it, but I know what I'm looking for. And that's where Israel was encamped, and then all around that, obviously, probably about two million people encamped in this valley, uh, just waiting to see what God would do. And so if we swing back our viewpoint here, uh, you have Balaam prophesying from Mount Nebo overlooking this, which is a great view. I took some pictures, but I didn't uh, take a video because I uh, didn't think about it. But he goes up there for the second time to prophesy against them in Numbers 23. And then after he still doesn't prophesy or curse the people, but prophesies of their blessing, then King Balak brings him down here to uh, Peor, and there he again looks over the valley and blesses the people. And of course, you have the famous prophecy in Numbers 24, where he's blessing the people and prophesying that out of you shall come a star and a scepter, meaning that this is a messianic prophecy. There's going to come an individual who has the right to rule and he's going to bring deliverance for the people. And so this is where this happens. Uh, in the valley of the Transjordan right here as Israel is waiting to cross over into the land of Israel. Remember, they have to ford the Jordan River, which is uh, going to happen later on. And so they're, they're waiting here in a holding pattern uh, until God uh, gives them the go-ahead to move forward. And so this is where they wait. And you can actually see, uh, unfortunately, this is, there's no way that it's going to show up on the video, but you could see Jericho on the other side of the Jordan. This is a great day, absolutely fabulous with, with how clear it is. A lot of times it's not very clear this time of year, but you have clarity involved here because it rained this morning, and so that kind of got rid of a lot of the haze. So you can see Jericho directly across the land, across the Jordan River here. This is something, uh, so when you think about when Israel's camped out, waiting to go after Jericho, this is something that they're seeing every day, this fortress that they're gonna have to take. And then another thing that you can actually see today is on, on the very top of the ridgeline, just under the clouds, you can see three towers, and those are actually the towers of Jerusalem. So you can actually see Jerusalem from Jordan as well. Jordan and, and Israel are very close proximity, specifically Jerusalem and Amman, very close. And so this is just a testimony of how small the land is by which the events happen in it. So it's really kind of neat. By the way, while Israel is camped in, uh, here at Shittim, at the bottom uh, of the lake, Moses makes the trek up from there all the way up this route up to Mount Nebo up here and that's where he dies according to Deuteronomy 34 and no man knows where his grave is but I'm happy to report that I found it I'm just kidding I didn't but uh, that's where where he dies and then of course nobody knows where his grave is and so it's just seeing the proximity there you know you just wonder what kind of walk that would have been you know the final final walk obviously Moses was in incredible shape to be able to do that I mean it wasn't as if this was a death where he just was weak and slowly faded out. I mean, he marched up in full strength and God took his life. I mean, this wasn't just some, uh, and of course it's because he sinned and he, he was not no longer worthy of leading the people into the promised land because of that sin. And it's a, you know, a good reminder of the cost of sin. So, uh, you know, just thinking through, thinking through all of these details is just really kind of rewarding. And of course, uh, I hope uh, to be back one day but I'm looking forward to Israel as well. And who knows, I've talked to some of you guys as well, uh, just joining uh, on, to go to Israel someday. I hope this kind of encourages you and lets you know that I'm not slacking over here either. I am exploring. I'm doing the Indiana Jones thing in some regard. But uh, anyway, I do miss everybody and uh, I can't wait to be back with you all, hopefully soon, if the Lord preserves my life. And until that time, Lord, may you continue on being faithful. All right, we'll talk to you guys later.